own. So let's get straight into draft. Uh, draft starts off the Aurora and the Rakan band by the Saints, and then the Syndra and the Rel band. Now these are pretty ordinary bands. Rel is very strong right now. So is Syndra mid. The Saints were actually looking for it today. Uh, so that being banned out is kind of unfortunate. The Rakan just a pretty standard band for the Saints and the Brom here coming out too. So the Brom is a little bit of a niche band, uh, but it is very very logical. Although here I see they ban the Corky. The Corky ban is a little bit uh, weird considering the fact that Corky got nerfed in the latest patch. Uh, reminder to everybody watching, Ambessa is currently banned. You cannot play her no matter what because she was just released and as we all know, Daddy Riot absolutely loves to make their new champions broken. So, they are banned out for this patch. Uh, so, first pick for the Saints, that's Skarner. Very standard tank pick. Holy smokes, this draft is going quick. Okay, Jinx and Wukong on the 2-3. Uh, very interesting way to pick. Choosing your bot lane and your jungler at the same time is kind of weird. Usually you want to pair that up uh, with your support or you want to do like a jungle mid type combo. Uh, so it's interesting to see those two picks come out first. Maybe they're trying to hide their hand for their solo lanes. Uh, so very interesting to see. Here the Saints are waiting on the reply with 30 seconds left. They're going to pick the Yone as a carry mid laner here. Uh, very very interesting pick. Yone is kind of just a staple of the mid lane, as in you can play him pretty much any time, and he's going to be decent because it's Yone, and do I need to say more? Uh, but it's going to be interesting to see what their opponents play into it. The Aphelio is here being picked out by the Saints as the ADC. Uh, going to be an interesting way to see. We have previously seen them play the Aphelios. We know that League does have a PhD and is therefore allowed to play Aphelios. Uh, so it's going to be nice to see uh, some neat Aphelios plays here. In the top lane... The set coming out. Now, set is a very rare pick. You don't usually see him come out. So it's going to be interesting to see what kind of build he's going for. I'd love to see like a heart steel set, but it's probably going to be your standard bruiser set, uh, which absolutely nukes the ADC with a well-timed W with a flash. Here, first bands for the top lane going to be against that Olaf, although Ricky is not the one playing today. Uh, it is Sama, Matty, Flocon, Leg, and Miracle. So, no Ricky. So, the Olaf ban is interesting, but wouldn't be what I would have gone for personally. The Melio ban here by the Saints. Uh, an interesting ban, definitely, because Melio does pair up relatively well with Aphelios, but they're probably going to be trying to get him with a Lulu, uh, which would be very, very nice to see. The Gwen ban in the top lane. Uh, yeah, Set definitely does not like playing into the Gwen, so very, very, very good ban here. Uh, even though Gwen did get nerfed recently. And let's see, what do the Saints reply with here? They have last ban, but it's kind of um, in the air as to what they're going to pick out here for their last ban, because they have a pretty decent team composition. I don't see a lot of things that can really block them out. Uh, but yeah, here, a Talia ban, uh, which makes sense. I mean, honestly, as a Yone, you don't really want to play into that Talia. That minefield is a problem. Skarner can't gank you. XYZ, we call it a day. Here, the Galio for the mid lane coming out. Okay, so this is going to be the Faker effect. Uh, I'm calling it right now because Faker played it at Worlds and their mid laner is like, nah, trust me, I'm Faker, guys. Um, you are not, in fact, Faker. And uh, last time I checked, Galio is an anti-mage. And you're playing it into Yone. Do I need to say more? I don't think I do. But anyways, uh, here... Ooh, wait, hold on. The Rise being picked out. Okay. That's an interesting pick. So is it a rise top or is it a rise mid? Because Yone can be played both top and mid and so can rise. Although granted rise is more known for playing mid. I don't think the Saints would purposefully pick rise into a Galio, which is his immediate counter. Uh, but here, as we can see, the Lulu being picked out for that Aphelios, because of course, who doesn't want a Lulu with their Aphelios? Uh, it's like the best combo known to man. And then, ooh, here the Thresh being hovered. Interesting. Okay, so the Thrash is a really good combo with the Jinx. It allows you to get those picks. Uh, but Nautilus, ooh, also an option. Honestly, you just want that engage. But yeah, okay, so Thrash, Jinx in the bot lane, and then Aphelios and Lulu in the bot, uh, for the Saints. It's going to be kind of interesting to see how this one plays out because, yeah, okay, Thresh is good at getting those picks, and if he grabs a Felios, it can definitely result in some good damage. But with the Lulu covering him, I have the feeling that bringing a Felios closer to Jinx is actually going to be more of a problem than it is going to be a solution. Usually, you want to bring the ADC to, into your ADC so that you guys can both gang up on him and deal damage. But with an Enchanter, mainly Lulu, 
Lulu can really cover that Aphelios and make sure he just doesn't die. And if he's able to land some good DPS on that team, uh, it's going to be rough. But what I'm really interested in here is the Rise and Yone. Uh, those two being flexible in both top and mid is going to be very nice to see. Uh, I don't know the exact champion pool between um, Flocon and Sama, so it could be either or. Although I would love to see uh, that rise into a set, because Set's biggest weakness, right, is the fact that he doesn't really have mobility. So if Yone is being played mid right now, it's beautiful because you have a Yone into a Galio. Galio isn't going to be able to do anything. And then Rise into Set. Set can't really do anything. Rise rushes Frozen Heart. He has good damage. He lowers the attack speed of Set. And he um, himself gains more mana, which in turn gives him damage, uh, and make sure he doesn't run out of mana. So you've got a Rise that's going to be relatively tanky, but a decent secondary front line to that Skarner. And you've got a Yone that's able to go, you know, full damage, blah, blah, blah. And you've got your uh, Aphelios that's able to do, well, Aphelios activities. Uh, on the side of the opponent, though, yeah, that Jinx Thrash is going to be relatively decent. The set, I don't see where it plays in, but understandable. The problem is they don't have, like, a clear tank, right? They've got the Wukong, which is a good engage, don't get me wrong, great engage on the Wukong. Um... But, like, you can't really follow up after you're engaged, right? Wukong is a champion. You go in, you spin, you Shadow Clone Jutsu, you spin again, and then you get the hell out. Because you don't really have backup after that. Maybe you bonk someone with your Q, but that's about it. Set is kind of the th same thing, right? He grabs somebody, preferably the tank, slams them into the enemy ADC, tanks up a bunch of damage, pulls out his W... True damage on everybody, and then he needs to get out because he doesn't have his W and he doesn't have any survivability anymore. Galio, kind of the same thing, right? He strikes, he taunts, uh, he tanks up a little bit of damage, but afterwards he just doesn't have anything to follow up on that. So Jinx needs to deal damage or else it will not work. Uh, but it's going to be interesting to see how it really plays out. So here, looking at lanes and how they're going to be active in like your your um, your standard game, right? I see the early game for the Saints actually being relatively decent, right? That Skarner can cover up a lot of the flaws of that not so decent uh, bot lane or not so early game bot lane, right? Aphelios Lulu is a scaling comp. Uh, but Skarner can definitely cover that bot lane, make sure they don't lose too much. And again, Lulu makes up for a lot of Aphelios' downfalls, uh, so they're not going to be taking too much damage in that bot lane. And then when you look at the mid lane, that Yone is going to be pretty darn strong at any point in the game because, once again, it's Riot's favorite boy. They're going to cherish him as much as they want, and they're going to give him everything that he wants because it's Yone. Um, this also applies to Yasuo, but he's not here, so I can't I, I, I can't talk funny about him. Uh, but yeah, so Yone's going to be perfectly fine in the mid lane. I can see this scaling very, very well. Again, Galio's an anti-mage, but um, Yone is not a mage. He's... Uh, a bunch of BS, that's what he is. Uh, <laughs> okay, being realistic, uh, Galio is not going to be having a good time in this lane whatsoever. I can see it, because he has a, a magic damage shield, right? But that's not going to do anything for that Yone. Because the Yone, first of all, most of his damage is AD or adaptive. So if it's adaptive, he's just going to deal, deal AD anyways. Because, again, Galio prefers magic damage uh, centered opponents. And then, over time, he's just going to build into irrelevance, because Galio does that, right? If there aren't a lot of mages, you don't really do much. And there are three ADs on the uh, on the side of the Saints, so you gotta kind of have to keep that in mind. Uh, once you're looking at the Wukong, the Wukong's gonna be interesting. He's decent in the early game. In the mid game, he's like, I... Uh, he gets that Black Cleaver, the Divine Sunderer. He does some good work. He's kind of like a Lee Sin at the end of the day. Uh, but then afterwards, once you get into that late game, Wukong is basically just there to spin twice, and that's about it. So it's going to be interesting to see how they play him. I do believe he got buffed, uh, but I'm not 100% sure. So that Wukong buff might be what's driving them to play it. Uh, it is an option, but again... It's Wukong. He does have utility. Maybe this guy just played too much Black Myth Wukong. That's, that's, maybe that's what it is. He just got the game and he was like, yo, I'm cracked at this game. Trust me, I play Wukong in League of Legends. Same thing. Uh, which it isn't, but hey, I mean, somebody can dream. 
uh, <laughs> one way or the other. It's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. Uh, the Skarner is going to be interesting to see how it plays out. I wonder if he's going to be playing a little bit more towards that top lane or that mid lane. Because as we all know, uh, the Aphelios Lulu is not going to be having too much trouble into that Thresh. Because, well, Lulu covers Aphelios. If they grab Lulu, well, Lulu just polymorphs and shields herself and walks away. If they grab Aphelios, well, you're basically bringing a bomb into your ADC. So, yeah, your ADC is dead. Congratulations. Um, so, yeah, the Skarner's probably going to be playing around that mid lane, the top lane. Uh, but where exactly, it's hard to tell. Because if the Yone really needs that much help, which he shouldn't, uh, it's probably going to screw over Skarner's pathing a little bit. And then if Skarner plays top, well, again, you're playing top, so you don't really need to put the set behind, right? Set is a very early game champion, and then as he moves on to that mid to late game, uh, he is basically just there to stack up grit and one-shot the ADC with a well-placed W, right? You stack up your grit, then you stack up your W, and then you flash your W right onto the ADC and deal, like, 200 true, uh, 2,000 true damage to the ADC. The ADC pops, like, a like a balloon, and you the game's done, right? Uh, really easy to do, no problems there whatsoever. But getting to that point is kind of difficult um, and time-consuming, right? Because, okay, yeah, you need your items. Now, I personally prefer playing the set with Heart Steel because it makes funny numbers happen. Uh, you know, you go Heart Steel, then Titanic Hydra, then Blood Mail, and you just have a ton of AD and a ton of HP, and you can usually pull off, like, two Ws, uh, in the middle of a fight, and it's absolutely terrific because people get nuked, and it's funny. Uh, but again, this is more of like a, a team fight centered set, right? Because this is more competitive play. This isn't solo queue. So if you're looking for that team fight set, you're probably only getting one W off, and you're getting shredded right after that. What I want to see from the Yone is a Serpent's Fang, though. If a Serpent's Fang comes out, this could work. Wonders against the set. You've got Thresh Shield. Uh, I do believe Galio is probably going to build something like uh, what's it called? Uh, the uh, the magic item that the, 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 the words are hard. The um, lost chapter item that gives you a shield. But anyways, let's head into game. We see a fist bump already coming out from Oakland. Uh, they are looking for an invade. Let's see if this Aphelios is going to fall for it. Absolutely not. He just got spotted on vision. All right. And he's giving us a dance. Leg loves to see it. All right. So they're all walking in. They initiate the sweeper. They're walking down. Is it working? They're, they're backing off. Okay. They're a little confused. Uh, but yes, so it is a rise top. I love it. Okay, this is perfect. This is exactly what I wanted to see. The rise top into the set. It's so terrifying to play into because set can't do anything. He tries to walk up to the rise. Yeah, not happening, chief. He hits one W, slows him down, walks away, no problem. Set can't pull him in. He can't get his combo off. He can't deal good damage. So this is going to be some great poke from Sama uh, that's going to come out. Now, looking at the runes. Uh, so phase rush for Sama, of course, it's just a better one. And oh my god, here they actually lane swap. Uh, so Set is going to go mid. And, um, of course, the Galio going to top lane to deal with the rise, which actually makes sense. Because you don't want to deal uh, with a Yone as Galio. But here, a little bit of a skirmish in the bot lane. Miracle takes some damage because he got hooked. Uh, doesn't have all his abilities up yet, right? Because it's just level 1. So it actually does deal some good damage um, with those hooks. But they need to get a few more of those hooks if they want to feel safe in that lane. So those potions are going to be able to be used up uh, relatively efficiently. And here, Leg very confident actually going for the Cull is a very interesting uh, choice. Again, Cull is a great starter item almost all the time. Ooh, Leg here gets picked out, but holy smokes, that's a lot of shields. Uh, the barrier gets popped, plus you've got the Lulu shields. Lots of damage going down, but Cole and you. Oh, first blood goes straight to Miracle. Unfortunately, Leg was not able to take it, but it doesn't matter. Leg hits his level two, so he is able to deal some good damage now. Uh, and it's going to be some decent amount of life here in the mid lane. Of course, Flocon uh, pretty much holding up well to this set. Not too much of a problem. Sama doing some good damage uh, to the Galio, even though he is up against a counter matchup. Uh, and yes, that trade from Flocon on the Yone is just so annoying to deal with because you can't do anything about it, mainly as a set, right? Set has a relatively large hitbox compared to characters like... Um, 
like Yone. Uh, ooh, hold on, Matty here, looking for the gank. Wes gets airborne. Matty pull up, walking up menacingly, very slowly though. Wes forced to flash and is still going to get caught out. One, two, three, possibly? Yep, and that's the kill straight to Flocon. And the Saints are starting off strong with two kills. That is very nice to see. Here, uh, this Galio is looking a little interesting. So, for some reason, Galio started off Dorn's shield, which I, I'm not sure that's the usual start, but I guess it does make sense to a certain extent. Uh, you want to minimize the poke as much as possible. But I personally would have played this a little bit more aggressively. We've gone for the Dorn's ring, tried to go for some good uh, damage on the Rise. But again, uh, Rise does have phase rush, so it could be he is very elusive in that sense. Uh, but you know what? Galio's farming up relatively well. It's 27 to 27 right now. So it's not too bad here. Oh no! Wukong gets caught out. One, two, three. You get the combo from the Starner. Uh, some good damage down, but here is bot lane is there to bail him out with the Thresh Lantern. But here, Lake closing in on them. He has green, uh, he has blue and purple, so he can land a stun. The root lands onto the Jinx. Benzap gets taken out. Shadow Clone Jutsu will not save him today. Bolyu goes down too. That's a double kill for Maddie. Very, very good trades here coming out uh, from the Saints. Getting up 4 and 0. Oh. That economy is looking swell. They are up right about 2.5k. Uh, and mainly that early game, right? That's very, very strong. Uh, they've got already a plate down in that bot lane. And that Aphelios is just scaling slowly but surely. Sama here, though, gets caught out by a taunt. He's going to take a little bit of poke damage. But again, it doesn't really matter too much. I mean, this Rise is just dealing some really good damage. And even though he initiated the poke, the, the, the skirmish... Galio is behind in health right now. Sama can just deal so much good, uh, so much wave clear and so much damage already in this early game. Flashes in though. Galio gets the airborne. Wukong gets the bonk, gets the kill, and Sama here does fall, end up falling. And even though he had the ward, he just didn't see the Wukong, and that happens a lot because again, Wukong has that stealth. He has that invisibility invisibility and he used his sweeper there uh, which definitely helped a lot so here maddie and miracle seem to want to pull up uh, either in the jungle or go for a gank i think that's going to be yeah they're going to try and steal the jungle here um of this wukong and it's honestly very very possibly going to be a skirmish in the top jungle uh for those reps no no maybe not oh they're okay they're going to play for grubs here so wukong losing his raptors uh, and is forced to get down the path or he needs to go for that little fight here going on the mid lane Wukong gets a good trade down. Wezek down a lot of HP. Not able to do much though, because again, this is a set. Set is not a very strong champion right now. Uh, mainly in that early game against a Yone, you just can't do anything. So it's going to be interesting to see how this uh, set translates into the mid game. But here, as we can see, Maddie doing those gloves. A trade coming out again in the mid lane. But Wezek just can't find anything. Um, and he's just getting his health chips down. And this is what the times where he just loves his passive because that set passive is keeping him afloat right now. We can see, looking at the items here, as uh, the Saints take the first of Void Grubs, um, Bami's Cinder on the um, Galio here, but... Oh, hold on. A little bit of trade here. Wezek with level 6. Doesn't decide to go in though. Of course, Fulcon level 7 uh, has the advantage. Red Team does end up getting the Infernal Drake. Uh, and the Slain Swap coming out here. Leg is now in the top lane. And we're going to see Sama taking the bot lane here as Yone goes in. Suppress. Airborne. Fulcon in a lot of trouble right now as everybody is pulling up. And he will end up dying, but the support gets the kill. Oh no, Shaggy was too powerful. It is unfortunate, but I mean, hey, sometimes things happen. Alrighty. Let's have a look here. Maddie coming for the trade kill, actually. Uh, slows down Wezek. Gonna be looking for that 1, 2, 3. Gets the third auto attack down. Galio ulti does come out, gives that spell shield. Wezek is fighting with barely any health left, but does end up getting the kill, and that's a very bad trade for the Saints here. Well, they are still up about 1k. Uh, that 
that uh, that difference is definitely shrinking by the minute. So they need to make sure that they keep their advantages. Sama here taking out the control work, uh, making sure that he has control of the vision in this bot lane. As if anything, uh, a lone rise is definitely something that can get ganked relatively easily. Uh, he does not have ghosts, but his ultimate is up, so as long as there's no CC, he should be fine. Ben Sap here, looking for uh, the wave just to soak it up, get some form of gold into his pockets since his mid laner isn't there. Gonna find a decent trade actually uh, on the Yone. But here, Leg is just farming, actually uses the Moonlight Visual just for some poke onto that Galio, which is surprising. Here, Miracle shows up right as Wezek is trying to get a trade in. Uh, Flocon takes a decent amount of damage though, honestly, that, that surprisingly went the side of the set. Um, but yeah, here, as we can see, we've got like three people shadowing mid at all times. It is it is a terrifying setup here. Uh, but Lake just poking this Galio so, so much. It is incredible uh, how much damage he can put down. But of course, he has a BF sword. He has a scout sh uh, slingshot. He's, he has good damage right now. Uh, granted, it's nothing exceptional, but he has good damage. Here, Maddie and Miracle pull up. Lake deals some good damage. Gets taunted, but it isn't going to do anything. Maddie's just too tanky, and that is a kill onto the Galio. Bully you here in the bot lane, forced to farm under turret, not able to do much. Uh, and Flocon here, kind of stuck. Oh, hold on, he's going to, yep, that's another gank in the mid lane. He is able to ult out, though. Ben Zap dedicating the flash to it, but still not able to get the kill. At Flocon actually going to pick up the kill here, but will get traded out with a well-placed threshold. Uh, but here, Leg, Maddie, and Miracle are just farming this top turret, getting those plates, and are probably going to knock it down for the first turret of the game. Uh, Wesley's tanking a turret shot there, uh, but luckily he had his W, so not too much damage going down there. And the Saints are ahead right now, um, and, and once again, 3k. Uh, so this is a very good Saint. Uh, for the Saints to be in. They're probably going to be looking for those grubs coming up soon in about 20 seconds. Uh, and then might even change the, chain that into a Drake. We will have to see. But Heartsteel already coming out from Maddie. Um, Rod of Ages coming out on that Rise is going to be very effective. That Bork is almost completed on the Yone. Junto's Wild Arrows on that Aphelios is going to let him scale up nice and quickly. Uh, Reminding you that Junto was changed very recently. It now gives you attack speed and oh, hold on a minute here. There's a fight in the mid lane. Plague dealing so much damage. Holy smokes, that's just Junto Wild Arrows. Okay, Benzap going to fall down to the lake. A three-man suppress from the Skarner gets some good damage down. Holy smokes, Wesek with a W tries to get some good shoe damage, but doesn't reach anybody. That Galio does end up getting rooted down and killed by Lig. Lig on a two-kill and two one to go shot down here. Sama gets the kill and is going to end up falling to the set for a trade. Wesek. Very, very low right now. Bull you also taking a lot of damage. That leg damage is insane. And he doesn't even have good weapons. He's on green and purple right now. That is insane. Ooh, set flashes in, tries to get some good damage down, but he's down to one HP. Well end up getting the kill. Miracle on one HP too. Bull you does get that one. And that is a uh, a jinx that is slowly scaling. But look at leg right now. He's got his wild arrows, he's got a crit cloak. He's one CS off completing his hole. He is sitting pretty right now, and he is 15 CS ahead of his lane opponent. Dragon spawns in, Maddie and Floke on right now, finishing off the last of the grubs. It's gonna be all of the grubs going to the Saints. So they're gonna have a lot of potential damage on those turrets. Here the Saints are going to have to see the dragon though. Uh, so Oakland Universe is here. Going to Head in terms of uh, dragons, but behind in terms of grubs. So it's going to be interesting to see how they use their uh, the dragons to their advantage, if they're going to try and pressure from soul, or if they're just going to uh, play for those minor buffs that they get, right? Because honestly, um, Infernal and Hextech are some really good dragons to get. Uh, mainly the original game, right? It's extra damage, it's extra attack speed, it's nice to have. Here, Miracle getting caught out. Set ultimate's gonna smash right into Lake. So much damage coming down. Miracle, <laughs> Miracle goes down. 
slightly followed by Link, but here, the Cavalry's here, Maddie shows up, Flocon with a big ultimate lines them all up, the Jinx Squad get hits, but doesn't deal much damage, AoE taunt from the Galio deals so much, but it doesn't do enough here, as the Rise gets the kill onto the set, here, Sama kind of caught out, but he has one of ages. He is sitting pretty. Maddie gets caught by a Thresh Hook, but it does absolutely nothing for you. Sent airborne by the Yone survives by barely anything thanks to that barrier. But here, Oakland University, they're all low. They cannot contest this turret. The Saints are just too tanky for them to deal any meaningful damage. Benzap tries to get his drop, but that Gromperton is not being had. But hold on here, the re-engage from onto Flocon to buy that Galio. Deals so much damage. Bullion with one kill. Maddie tries to get... <laughs> okay, finally does get the Galio, but they're all 1 HP. Maddie finds another one. Lulu finds one. And Bullion and WhatsApp are just stuck. They cannot keep on pushing. They are at the end of the line. They are not continuing this fight. Blake, on the other hand, is stuck in one. Gonna get beat up by the set. So many punches coming down. But, oh, no, nope, nope, the Lulu's here. You can't do anything. And there goes Wesek. Yeah, that's that's the the that's the Aphelios. Aphelios Lulu is a terrifying combo. The wild growth just keeps him alive for long enough. Uh, he's got that Q. Oh, wait, hold on. There's no wild growth here. They have the chance to kill this uh, Aphelios, and they will bully you with the kill. Miracle getting followed is probably going to have to end up dying here, too. So that's double kill for the Jinx. As here, uh, we can see their Oakland is coming back, right? Um, they're, they're getting the kills, but they're not getting the gold. And this is kind of what's important. The kills are nice, don't get me wrong. They give you a little bit of gold, they give you a little bit of XP, but they're not everything. What you really need is gold. It's like in uh, Deadlock. When you're playing Deadlock, you want souls. That's all you want, because that's what actually has value. Kills don't have value if they don't have a soul linked to them. And as the shutdown here on Maddie comes out, you can see they're looking for that gold. This gold is what's important. Gold and levels, not kills. You can have a bajillion gold and it won't, uh, or a bajillion kills, it won't matter if those kills didn't transfer into a decent amount of gold. And look at the gold difference. 31k to 27. Even though the Saints are down on kills, they are up on gold. And that's the only metric that actually matters. Here, the Moonlight Vigil, dedicated by Lake, going to find a good amount of damage. And here, Galio takes so much damage, but just makes it out in time. Donate here, gets the Wild Growth. Shaggy taking so much damage, is going to get dashed onto and killed by the Yone. But here, Aphelios finds a kill, finds the turret, but gets taken out by Benzap here. Uh, the rocket is going to find the Yone, and here the Saints are on the retreat. Holy smokes, that's a lot of movement speed on Sama on that rise. You can just stack up with that phase rush, with that passive. And I think something else dropped there. I'm not sure what, though. Maybe it was a movement speed. Um, but here, Benzap does end up stealing uh, that blue buff. Very well played by him. All right, looking at everything, what is the state of the game? So, we've got a set with a Stride Breaker and some Movement Speed Boots, because he needs them. Now, personally, I prefer going for those uh, Steel Caps on the set, but in this case, you need Movement Speed, because you need to actually catch up to your opponent, because with the current team top that the Saints have, you can't catch up to them. They're too fast, right? So he needs those Movement Speed Boots. Um, if you're looking at the Wukong, you've got Steel Caps and you've got a Triforce for those bonus bunk damage. Uh, the Galio, of course, here going for the Hollowed Radiance. Just your classic bunk, a Cinder item. Uh, but for mag magic damage. Honestly, I'm not a big fan of that. Like, yeah, okay, it gives MR, it's useful, but like half the damage that the Saints have. Oh, yeah, actually, okay, more than half, because you've got Skarner, you've got Yone, and you've got Avelios. That's all physical damage, not magic damage. So that Hollow Radiance is not getting much here. Hold on, Oakland, a little bit of a danger zone here. Samba gonna get some good damage down close on the airborne, gonna deal a good amount of damage. The two man suppress is gonna lay on both Wesek and then Snap. Lick gets the first one, gets the second one. That is the third one gonna be taken out, but this time it was by Skarner getting both the jungler and the uh, mid laner slash top laner at this point. And Molyu gets taken out too. That's gonna be an ace for the Saints. A triple kill on that Skarner and a double kill on that Aphelios. And here, they're just gonna keep on pushing. That's gonna be the bot turret, the bot inhibitor. 
can quite possibly even one uh, Nexus turret can end up falling here. And no, this is before the 20 minute mark. Okay, no. So, an inhibitor at pretty much 18 minutes is insane here. The things are going to recall, cash in everything, and then they're probably going to be heading straight for that dragon. Um, of course, going to have to defend that mid lane uh, because that wave is pushing in. But it's going to be something that is going to be quickly done. And then afterwards, you're going to see all the Saints beelining for that dragon, right? They don't want to be caught on Soul Point. But even then, even if they get caught out on Soul Point, they are 7,000 gold ahead. That is a big number. That is a lot of potential items in which they are ahead. And let's just look at the items. Seraph's Embrace already uh, on that wise. Maddie with two items. He's got the Heart Seal and he's got the... Um, that's not Maw. That is... That's really like that. There it is. Uh, Bork and Shield Bow on the Yone. Yuntal and IE on that. Aphelios and you've already got... Um, Echoes of Helia and on that Lulu. So, a lot of items on the side of the Saints. I'm surprised the Lulu isn't that far behind on items. That's insane. But look at Miracle. He's got 13 assists. That is a very good support if I have ever seen one, okay? That is very good kill for this nation. Out of 19 kills they've had, he was there for 13 of them. That is insane. Maddy here, uh, kind of bullying them in their jungle and just pushing his top lane in. Uh, wait, what the hell just happened to my eye? Okay, uh, tier 2 in the top lane, going to be taken down. Ben Sap gonna push that mid tier 1 turret. Gonna try and get some good use out of that Rift Herald. And probably gonna try and push that tier 2 also, uh, just because he can. The waves are being thinned out by the Saints here in the top side. They're just pushing these waves in, dealing some damage here. The Galio gets caught, but doesn't matter because the buffers. Oh no, there goes the Jinx into the blender. Uh, it's gonna get picked up by Sama here, and this is pretty much just the Saints ending. I mean, they're already at those Nexus turrets, and they got the Jinx. All that's left is essentially tanks here. The ultimate does end up finding Link. Uh, so there is a fighting chance for Oakland here as they're fighting this Wokon. Wokon ends up dying. Sama does find the ultimate, is able to bring himself and Miracle back uh, behind Maddie. And here he's dealing the damage. Sama with the double kill, make that a triple kill. Can he find Wesley for the Quadra? Oh, oh, he's walking away. Maybe, maybe, maybe. The root comes out. The shield, that's a Quadra kill. Can he look for the Penta? Come on, Penta, 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 Penta. Come on, bully you. Do it, do it, do it. Okay, he's looking for it. He wants it, he wants it. You know he wants it. Come on. Aw, okay, he's walking away. Never mind. But I mean, hey, a quadra kill on Mirai's top. If I've ever seen one, that's beautiful right there. Uh, Rise top isn't a pick that you see all the time. And the fact that we've seen it and seen it get quadra kill, now that's insane. Alrighty. Let's look at things how they are. Uh, Oakland University is uh, in need of reconstruction right now. They're um, they they could definitely make some use of uh, in, in uh, two inhibitors down, one Nexus turret down, and uh, oh yeah, oh okay, and the same have uh, Baron as their best turret. So that Baron is going to be a lot of damage down, uh, and is probably essentially going to be. Uh, Final push for as I mean, Oakland can't really do much. They are 10k behind, uh, if not more, actually. Yeah, they're they're the they're, they're 10.9k behind. So uh, that's that's a lot of gold that they're behind. They can't really contest this. Uh, so they have to fight in base, right? And even when they're fighting in base, there's not going to be much that they're able to do because that Baron buff is just going to keep on pushing them in constantly, relentlessly. So here, oh, Shaggy almost went to the block on, but you can see the little unit right there trying to move. He tried it, but it didn't work here. Leg on three items, LDR, IE, and Utah's Wild Arrows. This leg is just a wall of damage, and he is ready to dish it out. So we're definitely going to be seeing uh, a lot of damage here on the side of the lane. The hook connects onto Flocon, but it doesn't matter. He's got that 
shield bow, keeping him alive. Whereas I get frontlining for his team, that grit at full force, but he just can't land a W anywhere. So he's not going to spend it here. Maddy gets caught out. The inhale going to actually miss here as Bully gets taken out by Flocon. Wazek with the shield is able to keep himself alive, but it doesn't matter. His support is down, his top laner is down, and his jungler is about to fall too. <laughs> Saints going for the kill here uh, as Lig, Miracle, and Flocon decide to end. They're not going to let them get the Galio one more time. And at 23 minutes and 23 seconds, the Saints are going to, wi to win the game. An absolutely terrific performance on the side of the Saints here. Very, very well done. So, with all this done, what happened and how did it happen? Essentially, the Saints won uh, about at the mid-game here. They kind of just said, okay, we know what's going on. We kind of look at their team comp and yeah, we know how to beat them. And once they kind of just identified what the problem was, they said, okay, there is no problem. Well, our problem is that we're not pushing hard enough. So they just started pushing hard enough, and you could see it. The bot lane started going down, the top lane went down, they went to Baron, they won. It was a clean game all in all. The Saints showed just how good they are at this game, and how efficient they are at winning. But, until next game, uh, we're going to send it to a quick break before that one. So, I'll see you guys.
game two here of League of Legends. Once again, I am your host, Gabriel, aka Blockbeat, and we are getting into this draft. All right, so here, same bands as last time, the Rel and the Sintra being battened out, first things first. Saints, choosing the Ash and the Aurora ban here. Um, so interesting, pretty much the same bands as last time, but this time, they're going to decide to ban out Maddie Skarner. No surprises there. This Skarner is devastating. Maddie is just so strong with it and able to do so much with it that honestly, leaving the Skarner open is basically courting your death. Okay, you will always lose when Maddie has Skarner. Why? Because it's Skarner and it's on Maddie. Do I need to say more? No, I don't. Just ban it. All right, what are the Saints going to pick last time? They're okay. They're gonna ban this set. Actually, this is interesting. Uh, but the Corky here going to come out. I don't know why they're picking the Corky. The Corky was nerfed recently. He might still be strong. Don't get me wrong. But with the recent nerfs, I don't think it's worth it picking the Corky here. Uh, but Yone here instantly going to be locked in. Probably going to go mid again and deal with that Corky. Uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how that one plays out. The Sejuani being the second pick for the Saints. Uh, interesting. Maddie does love playing those tank junglers, so the Sejuani is essentially just another Skarner that doesn't go through walls, but has a more funny ultimate and has more stuns, essentially. So it's always fun to see that sejuani Yone combo, uh, because they just pair up so well together. Uh, and then here, I'm interested to see how, uh, they, what, what they choose. The, ooh, the Renekton. Already showing their hand in the top lane is an interesting choice. I usually don't want to show your top lane too early on, but this might pay out for them. Uh, here, the Renekton is a de pretty staple top laner. I mean, you can make use of about all the time, but uh, it's going to be kind of difficult to see where they choose to place it, right? Because, yeah, okay, Renekton is a great character, uh, but if you don't playing it well, it's not going to be very effective. And once again, the Faker effect. Galio being picked out again. Uh... <laughs> By the mid laner here, or pos no, actually, wait, what? Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Corky, Renekton, Galio. That's going to be a Corky ADC, I think. Renekton in the top lane, Galio in the mid lane, and Corky in the bot lane, which means that that Renekton is going to be dealing with the brunt, that force that is Cassante. That's going to be a bad time for uh, that Renekton. Renekton is not going to be having a good time into a Cassante of all characters, uh, because, of course, Cassante is. Ambessa 0.5, I guess. I don't know. It's hard to tell which version of which champion these champions are. There's so many of them. The Braum here being banned out by the Saints. Uh, an interesting pick, as always, but it might just mean they're looking for, uh, once again, that Aphelios Lulu combo. I wouldn't be surprised, but here, yeah, there you go. They ban out the Aphelios because they saw the Braum ban. They're like, no, 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 we're not letting you do the same thing twice. Uh, that would that would not be smart. So here, the Rakan ban by the Saints is kind of interesting. Let's see what they decide to finish off this ban phase with. It's uh, they don't have a lot of things that they can ban out because the Saints haven't really shown their hand too much in terms of their bot lane, and that's all that's left to pick here. Right? They have their mid, their jungle, and their top. So here, the oh, they're gonna ban the Ziggs? Really? Ziggs? Nah, they're not going to ban the Ziggs. Yeah, okay, there you go. The Nautilus ban. A lot more sense there. Saints are going to pick up the Kogma as an ADC. Okay, well, we all love the uh, the spitting on hit ADC. Kogma is just a funny character. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how this Corky, sc uh, Corky Kogma scales up. Uh, but he is dealing with the Corky in lane, right? Uh, which is, it's kind of weird. They, they, they Corky'd first, and then they picked... Their top and mid, which kind of doesn't play into the whole aesthetic of, yeah, we're going to flex pick our Corky, but whatever. Uh, the Zyra here going to be picked either support or jungle, right? Zyra can actually be played jungle now. Uh, so, could be a Zyra jungle. I wouldn't be surprised by it, honestly, because I don't really see Zyra supports all that much in um, competitive play, but... Hey, it could be a Zyra support. Who knows? I know a guy that is a terrific Zyra player. Um, and, like, his main thing was he, he usually played her support. But, yeah, no, it's in the jungle. That, that Zyra is 
going to be in the jungle. That is a jungle Zyra and a Thresh support with a Corky ADC. This is a very flexy team composition, but I don't like it. They could have done it better. If they would have gone like Corky Zyra, the Saints would have had absolutely no idea what in the world was going on. Right? But they didn't. They picked Corky first and then they kept their flex for the last for like the before last slots. It makes no sense. Anyways, here. Here are the Saints going to go for the Nico support. So we're gonna get a little bit of prop hunt game uh, here going on. But we absolutely love Nico. We love the prop hunt games. They're always fun to play around with. Um, and we're able to see if their opponents can count minions or not, because that's what, uh, that's what Nico does. She checks if he can count minions. The most simple piece of math can basically get rid of half of Nico's kit, but nobody can seem to count minions. It's, it's really weird. Anyways, looking at the team compositions, what do I think? What are the thoughts? What are the strong points? What are the weak points? Okay, looking at the Saints... Uh, they've got two tanks, they've got Kogma, which is uh, on hit ADC that has really good range and is artillery technically. Yone, who is everything, and Aniko, who is really good engage, really good CC, and plays prop hunt. That's like the fun fact. Um, so, honestly, all in all, Saints team composition, very good. I can clearly see how this fight goes. Uh, on the other side, though, we've got a Corky Thresh. Bot lane, a Zyra jungle, Renekton in the top lane, and Galio in the mid lane, if it's not the other way around. Uh, honestly, this has the same identity crisis as their last team composition. They've got a Bruiser, an AP tank, into a team composition that is mainly AD. And I guess Kogma is AP and AD adaptive, so you could. it makes a little bit more sense in this case. But again, it's nonsensical. Uh, you've got a Zyra, because I guess you needed magic damage, but, like, why? If you need magic damage, like, you could have picked Lilia, you could have picked Evelyn, you could... Okay, maybe not Evelyn. Evelyn's not great right now. Uh, but, like, you could have picked Lilia, you could have picked um, Morgana, you could have picked... I think Morgana's still good. Um, although Morgana isn't the best jungle, so Zyra probably would have been better here. But, yeah, um... Oh, who else is an AP jungler? Jeez. How can I not think? Uh, it is Nidalee. Um, like those AP junglers that have good damage and play very strongly in the early game. Like I would have preferred seeing that over a Zyra. Because don't get me wrong, a Zyra is good, but there is so much more consistent damage. Right? Zyra needs her plants to deal damage most of the time, and most of the time she doesn't have those plants unless she's setting up her fight preemptively. Right? So you could play around those plants very easily. And mainly with how much AoE the Saints have, she's not going to be able to get all that much DPS from her plants. So all she's going to be able to play around is her ultimate. And even then, I don't know if it's going to play out well. Anyways, the Thresh, decent pick. All in all, I mean, it's Thresh. Just hit your hooks and that'll be fine. Uh, Galio... Again, this is just the Faker Effect Galio. This Galio should not be there, period. Like, why are you picking Galio? There's one mage in this entire team composition, and their support. Like, there's just, no, just don't, 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 do not the Galio, please. Just do not the Galio. Literally anything else. Cassiopeia, Syndra, okay, well, Syndra's banned. Uh, you could have played Nico yourself. You can play uh, Oriana, you can play Akali if you really want to and play Melee. Uh, you can play Yasuo, okay, please don't play Yasuo, respect yourself. Um, but like, y there are so many mid lane picks, you could have played Fizz! Like, look at that! Fizz, great character! Uh, like, there are so many characters, okay, that you can play that aren't Galio, that are going to be significantly more effective at what Galio does. Galio just... You're not Faker, okay? That's the point. You're not Faker. You, you, ah. Galio's okay, but he's he's not what he seems to be, okay? You need to pick him based on what your opponent picks, not based on what you feel like picking. This is not solo queue. You can't just blind pick Galio or pick Galio into a Yoni for no reason, okay? You need to have a reason to pick the Galio. Anyways, yes, I am very frustrated at the fact that Galio came out twice, if you couldn't tell already. But anyways, top lane, Renekton. Stable pick, stable pick. Honestly, 
all in all, sure, why not? I mean, 9 out of 10. Go ahead. The only other thing you could have picked was Kastante, because let's be honest, those are the only two champions that are playable top lane instead of from Aatrox. Um, although, I would, it, it would have been funny to see an Aatrox. I would love to see an Aatrox. But let's be honest, nobody's ever going to pick Aatrox, at least for now. Uh, maybe in the future when he gets a buff. Hopefully. This is, this is a lot of hopium. A, a lot of hopium. Uh, and the quirky bot lane is interesting. Because Corky got nerfed recently, and him going in the bot lane won't change the fact that he got nerfed, right? Like, it's it's just a general nerf. It's not like a, oh, yeah, no, if he's in the mid lane, he gets one less gold per CS. No, no, no. It's like, he's just nerfed, right? So, like, whether he's mid or he's bot doesn't really change the fact that he got nerfed. So, he has just less damage available right now. And then on top of that, just to, like, have it that way, I guess, um, Corky doesn't really, like, scale ultimately super well. And he doesn't make those 2v2 plays like a lot of other ADCs do, right? Corky is a very one-dimensional character. It's just a deal damage. Deal more damage. Deal more damage. Deal more damage. Deal more damage. He's kind of like a Kogma in that sense, right? He always deals more damage, but he doesn't have those utilities, right? Kogma doesn't have a lot of utility, but he does have, you know, a slow or something like that, right? Corky doesn't really have that. He just has armor pen, he's got damage, and he's got true damage, and like a dash, and that's it. So, all in all, honestly, I don't like this Corky pick. It could have been so many different things. It could have been a Jin trying to capitalize on... Well, okay, the, no, because it was a force pick. That's the other thing. Who first picks an ADC? Like, oh, there are so many things in this team composition that are just... That make no sense. Like, okay, how, how would you do this draft? All right. First, if you're 100% sure you want that Corky, no matter what, that Corky is going to be in your draft, honestly, you pick that second. Okay? You go for, like, Zyra first, okay? Because you know, Zyra is a good flex pick. They're going to instantly think, okay, they're picking their support. What goes well with Zyra? We're going to, like, ban that out or something like that, right? So, Saints, go for their 1-2, uh, or for the 2-3, of course. Uh, and then you're going to go for, like, Corky and then Galio. Like, that would have been so much more sensical. But anyways, hopping into game. Here, as we can see, Renekton going for some very aggressive runes. PTA Ignite on Renekton? Are you kidding me? Okay. Somebody's confident in their abilities to take out a Cassante. I know I wouldn't be. That's a grasp of the Undying Cassante. And trust me, that rune lives up to its name. That Cassante is not going to be dying. And you can quote me on that. So... I don't know what Wezek is thinking here, but I hope he knows what he's doing because from what I can tell, um, he ain't going to make much use of that Ignite or that PTA because this Cassante is just going to stay alive. Anyways, Zyra in the jungle has the Electrocute, of course, makes sense. Uh, I personally like to go Dark Harvest, but both do pretty much the same thing. They're just more damage. Um, Aftershock on uh, Galio makes what? It's electrocute. That's why. Uh, the Conqueror on the Corky is interesting. Shaggy here opting for the Glacial Augment. It's, it's a rare rune, but it is a decent rune. Uh, as we can see here. Ah, another lane swap. Once again, Flocon is going against Wezek. And the Galio is in the top lane against Asama. So, yeah, that's going to be a uh, little bit of a change, honestly. Now I can see why Wesik went for the Ignite PTA. It makes a lot more sense now, uh, because he definitely can go for those kills on the Yone. With the shield break, he's going to deal enough damage that I can see the kills coming out. Miracle uh, and Lig here are going to be dealing a lot of damage. They have very good poke, mainly considering that Lig went Arcane Comet. You don't usually see that, but it's Corky. And Corky can just... Or, uh, Corky. Oh, boy. It's Kogma. Kogma just has the ability to kind of build anything. But look at this poke, okay? Just look at this poke. This is a Doran's Ring first I, uh, starter item, by the way, on the Corky. He's just poking with his W. And it's dealing so much damage. I love it. Anyways, here. Traits coming out of the top lane. But again, these are very tanky characters. Even though... Um, they don't deal all that much damage, and even though the Galio isn't, you know, uh, tanking up 
mage. He is still tank, right? By definition. So, yes, he can play the Galio. It's not that bad, but it's not ideal. Here, though, Bully taking so much damage. Holy smokes. Forced to recall, even though there's a way he can crash under his turret. He is not going to be asked about that one. Because here, Sama going for a gank? Flashes the Q and misses. Oh boy, that was very ambitious. Uh, as here, Maddie ganks the bot lane. Going to get the stun off, but not the damage. Miracle does end up dying here. Two bullet you who had to keep back into lane. Conqueror fully stacked. Maddie does end up dying here. That's a double kill for or, uh, a kill for bullet you and a kill for Shaggy. Uh, so the bot lane is actually looking pretty good, and the gold advantage is on Oakland University here. So. Good job by them. Honestly, I didn't expect them to play it this way, but very good plays. Alrighty. Take a look at the mid lane. Isaac, not having a great time, but honestly, it could be worse. Uh, as, oh, hold on. Lokon getting ganked here. Which way does he want to go? Does he want to go up or down? He's gonna choose to go down, gonna go through the jungle uh, to go back to lane. He, that Galio is just too present. Uh, so here, going to opt to take out... Um, yeah, take that path to the jungle, and uh, still does get his spot. But, um, here, that on that scuttle crab. Holy smokes, Flocon almost gets hit by the hook, but Shaggy's just not fast enough, and Yone's a little bit cool on that. A little 200 years uh, for that, so... Of course he doesn't get it. Here, Maddie sweeps out that vision, makes sure they have good control of that river. Sama crashes a good wave here. He might even opt for a recall, depending on how much money he has in his pockets. Uh, but one way or the other, it doesn't really matter. Uh, he is going to be the dominant force in the top lane. Pretty much no matter what. Why is it here? Uh, he's trade into Flocon. Flocon getting some good damage down, but also taking a lot himself. Uh, was kind of blocked off. Maddie here looking for the gank. One, two, three, four. The stun does come out. Wezek tries to life steal a little bit. Does manage to get out, and there's a pause coming out. Lig got disconnected. Unlucky. Well, oh, never mind. He's back. We're all good. Hey, everything's fine. Uh, sometimes things to make connection can be uh, problematic. But hey, things happen. It's fine. Uh, Wezek here is still alive. Probably gonna stay alive for a while. I don't think he's gonna look for a trade as here we're having technical difficulty uh, Freezing up a little bit, but I mean as we all know Riot Games, they're not the greatest at uh, keeping their game up uh, Functional I should say. I mean, okay, maybe not functional, but like working. Ah, there we go. Now the game's back on. All right um, Yes, we can all clap for Riot. Thank you Riot for making such a functional game um, Yeah, Riot Games absolutely hates me there. <laughs> Good thing I don't play their game anymore. The long live deadlock. I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, here in the ball lane, you can see Oakland is just getting bold. I mean, this double arcane comet is just. It just hurts, man. Like, double arcane comet, a squishy ADC, and a thrash. They're not having a good time at all. Look at this health bar. It's so low. Hold on here. Flocon and Benzap, uh, or Flocon and uh, Maddy find Benzap here, and they get a good trade on him. Once the ult out, Void Grabs are gonna be going to the Saints. Here, they're trying to contest, but Oakland just can't do anything. They, they can't contest this. Uh, the Saints are just too strong right now. And the, even though the gold isn't Sinclair sided, their characters are just so strong in this period of the game that they are forced to fall back. And Leg and Miracle get some free turret plates here. An absolute huge for them. Uh, they're able to get some good damage down. They're able to do a lot. You can see uh, Miracle making a good use of the Nico emotes here. If you didn't know, uh, the Nico phone lasts uh, significantly longer if you start an emote before it's uh, going to disappear. It's super useful to uh, maintain vision and stuff like that. So yes, there is a reason to tactically emote on your opponent as Nico. Only as Nico, though. Uh, it's it's not BM if you do it as Nico, but it is BM if you do it as as other characters. Uh, anyways, here, Link, solo in the lane, just farming up, uh, getting some good damage, stacking up, getting ready, is, wait, this is an AP Kogma, what? What? 
Okay! Wait. AP Kogma as an ADC. I mean, I've seen it all. And they're, they're doing this into a Galio, by the way. Like, the one character you usually don't want to build AP on. That's... Wow, that is... Okay. Well, you know what? It's fine. I mean, the Saints can pretty much get away with anything at this point. They're really strong. They just got Dragon again. Uh, or, sorry, God again. He just got Dragon. Uh, it is a Mountain Drake. The next one is going to... I knew it. Here, Flocon is in danger, though. Shaggy is playing with Fog of War here. Trying to possibly look for a hook angle. Hopefully he doesn't find it for Flocon's sake. And here... Oh, they're looking for the dive. They're looking for the dive. Which one is the real one? It's that one! Nico ult into Sejuani ult. Or, sorry, Sejuani ult into Nico ult. Finds that Galio. Galio goes down. I told you, man. It's the Faker effect. You don't... You shouldn't the Galio, but oh, hold on here. Two beats, three goes in. Wesik finds a magic. Lake taking so much damage. He doesn't have much life skills, so he can't really keep himself alive. Miracle taking a lot of damage, too. Going to end up falling. This is triple kill for Wesik. Lots of damage available on that Renekton. Holy smokes. What items does he have? That's just a Claude Field and a Doran's Blade. Oh, that's a threat. Lothar here getting caught out. Able to get away, though. Sama. <laughs> Pop in the alts, trying to get that Tolyu. Flashes over the wall, gets a good slow in. I don't think he's going to be able to... Oh, wait, maybe, maybe, maybe. Kasani, towards your gear champion, does end up getting him. Nice, good kill there. Uh, by the Saints, Sama able to get that lockdown on the court feet. But here, Flocon almost dies. Holy smokes. Uh, but, of course, the Galio doesn't have enough damage here. Much. Sama going to get caught out, does not have the ultimate available, so he cannot do much, and he is just going to get auto attacked to death by that Zyra. Oh, that's that's unlucky. Well, anyways, uh, onto the bot lane, Leg is just farming up those power plates. Um, again, this is one of the most surprising builds I have ever seen on a Kogma. This is just AP, there's no attack speed. Whatsoever. Tear of the Goddess, lost chapter, and two tones. Like, what is going on? I am so confused. How how is this Pokemon going? Pokemon just goes on here, but he's just going for magic damage. I guess he is up in his and high health, which is really good against me, but still. He usually wants to go for something like Eastern or um, Terminus or uh, Blade of the Rune King, something like that. This is just a really weird build. But one way or the other, there's three people in that bot lane, so all the solos are really solo right now. They are not going to get any assistance anytime soon. As we can see here, the Zyra, no mana, and needs uh, support because that wave is crashing. She is oom, um, she cannot do anything. Sama starts with the engage, gets her to finish that turn, and Yone comes and picks up the kill. Because Yone. Oh, hold on. Hold me here. Looking for, uh, looking for some damage, but Maddie with the ultimate gets followed up by Flocon with that Yone ult, but Flocon gonna get caught out. Maddie just left. Oh, it's because of the force. The Galio's here now. Galio gets some good damage down. Maddie needs to run away. He's not really tanky right now. All he has is a Ruby Crystal. Uh, he's, he's on a budget right now, and he's not able to make the most of it. Here, Sama trying to cover him, but the whole team is basically here. Four people in the top lane. Maddie, uh, Anne, Meek, and Miracle are relatively low down the lane. Miracle to cover up. Here, shot down onto the Renekton. Pop Blossom does connect onto two. Corky finds one, but Sejuani finds Galio. Bullyu tries to get damage down, but Maddie lives with one HP. And Shaggy, although he wants to make it out alive, he just can't. Sama with the triple kill. And wait, there was a shutdown on the Thresh. Why was there a shutdown on the support? You know what? I don't need to know. It's fine. Uh, looking at the gold now. So it's 8 to 7 on kills, but 20 to 22k for the Saints. The Saints are winning right now. I don't know how they're winning, but they're winning. So let's have a, a little bit of a gander at the item, shall we? We've got an Eclipse on this Renekton. Uh, an Akainic, Akainic Rukern uh, on the Cassante. So this is like a... An oh my god! Cassante just one-shot one builds 
Hong Kong, um, and an unending despair. That is insane. This Cassante is bad. These are two items. Holy smokes. Okay, so yeah, um, unending despair on Cassante, which will give him a decent amount of healing. We've got the Leandri's Torment on the Zyra. Uh, no items yet on the Galio, aside from the bottom Sundu and a um, Magic Null Cloak. Porgy does have the Spice Force, and that Thrash does have a um, Kindle Gem. But that's about it. They're the We've got the Sejuani, which is no items, of course, on the only. Hold on, here, there's a fight going down. Shaiji gets caught out by Miracle, and Zyra does end up stealing the dragon. But Red Deck here finds one kill, is able to dash out of the dragon pick. Swogon is caught out, gets killed, and they are getting out of there with very low HP. The Saints are not looking great right now. That was, uh, that was unfortunate. Like, don't get me wrong, they still had a goal. Dying and losing the dragon? That is that is not good. Alright. Let's have a look here at the build. Uh so Oh Link. Oh poor Link. He's got taunted, he's got hooked. He's got stunned. And he just doesn't have the damage. Unlucky. Actually, speaking of Link, let's look at his build. What is this build? Luton's companion. And then he's got a needlessly large rod. What? I mean, this is just clearly an AP hog level. Wow, okay. Wesik here getting caught by the Cassante ultimate, but saved by Shaggy. Never mind, Shaggy can't save him from that. Cassante is just too strong. Shaggy airborne. Can Sama make it out alive? Oh, dashes into Shaggy, gets the kill on Shaggy. But there's a dive in the top lane here. And Sama taking a lot of damage from Bully Yu. Can he stay alive? The airborne doesn't connect. Sama's taking so much damage. Those rockets are just shredding him. He flashes, but he cannot get out. And he will end up dying. Flick here, farming up the last of that top turret. Uh, and will end up getting the gold for it. And he's got a lot of gold, but he doesn't have kills. He's 0, 2, and 3. <laughs> what is this? The ADC doesn't have kills. The support has more kills than the ADC. What is this? It's all you need. Anyways, look on here in the top lane. That um, Galio though, so he's gonna watch out uh, and play this one smart. Shadow Crab is secured by the Saints here. Uh, gonna give them good control of that vision in the top side. But here, looking at this topside jungle, the Saints are kind of getting pushed out. The vision is getting cleared, and uh oh, hold on here. Wokong saw the opportunity. Can he get the kill? No, he cannot. Looks like Galio is left with 1 HP. Maddie here spawns in the rift zone. Or the uh, I would say. Yeah, it seems to be going into the mid lane. He's going to connect. Get the airborne onto the Syro. Maddie taking up a bunch of damage. Letting his yes is deal that damage. But it's not going to do anything as the Corky actually ends up getting him. Miracle with the flash ult to get away with 1 HP. Bull you is bullying Leg right now. Leg has no mana left. He is oom. But it doesn't matter too much as he is getting out and will be a recall. Uh, here, Flocon is flushing those side lanes. Taking out all the birds in his path. Samba getting kicked out by Wezek. And Ben Snap here going to be forced to perish, unfortunately. But here, Flocon gets caught into the stone. Boyu is, oh my god, that Corky damage is immense. That is a 6 and 2 Corky for you, ladies and gentlemen. So much damage potential present at all times. I know he got nerfed, but he still hurts. I mean, he's fed right now. The rocket melt being picked up by the Nico right now, but so will enable us to get some good uh, ultimates uh, in those team fights. But here the Saints are kind of the Saints are are they're ahead, but not by much. That's like a three uh, three hundred gold lead. It's not much. They won't be able to do much with it. They do have the turret advantage though. The only turret they lost is that bond turret. So they have a lot of oh, Ben Snap here getting caught out. Maddie going to connect onto that Nico loop. Ben Snap getting hit by the uh, is that the ultimate? I think that was no, that wasn't even the ultimate. That was just the stun on uh, Maddie's passive. Impressive that that was able to actually get thrown. I didn't think he was able to throw that. 
Wow. Very well done here. And good pick by the Saints. But still, they need to bridge that gap. They need to get more gold. They need to get ahead. Because I'm going to say it right now. Lick, I don't know what he's cooking. But I can guarantee you it doesn't taste all that good right now. And oh my god. Speaking of it doesn't taste good. Uh, that will leave a sour tag in Will Khan's mouth. He just got one shot by the Corky. I mean, I'm not surprised by it. What I'm surprised by is the fact that Flocon went in there. Bullyu is at level 12 right now, and he's got two items. You don't even have your second item. Okay, it is stuck. It's not all that stuck. So, like, it's it's not the time to be the 1v1 against the Corky. Sama here, uh, going up against two, possibly three. Uh, make that four. Maddie coming to back up. But holy smoke, Sama is tanking a lot. Gonna airborne them. But here, this is gonna be a team fight. Sama will be all out. Gonna deal as much damage as possible. Sama somehow gets a huge heal that blocks here. But not gonna be able to do much. Here, Flocon getting some good damage down. Gonna airborne the Galio. Galio goes down. Wesek trying to life flow off of the Szechuan. Maddie barely coming out alive. The artillery, never mind, he burns to death, unfortunately. Lig already out of mana. He can't do anything. Flocon, the only one left healthy. Shaggy, Liz, and Ben Snap are all low. So can they take out this Yone is the question. Yes, they can. Lig forced to recall because once again, he is out of mana. He can't do anything right now. Honestly, this is kind of disappointing. I, I didn't expect... No, wait, Lig didn't recall. Did he? No, he did. He recalled and then he teleported. Okay. Yeah. The problem right now is Lig has no damage. He's playing AP. Like, what? What are you doing? Like, get a Nasher's Tooth or something, man. This is just... This doesn't do anything. He's already half mana, bro. Oh, no. I don't like this. This is, just, this is like a meme build that I would build while playing top lane. This is not what I would expect from a Cosmo in like team play. Just AP Cosmo? Really? Like I understand the start of like starting Lost Chapter and building. Like, okay, I can get that. But like maybe you wanted to build uh what, 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 I can see that in the build for Cosmo. And like still building attack speed, right? But no attack speed items on Cogma? Like you you just you just Turned him into a mage. Like, you don't do that. He's an ADC, not a mage. Why are you? Oh, my head hurts. Anyway, look on here. Tries to find Ben Snap, but is he going to find much? Actually, Ben Snap's going to flash and root. He's going to pull up the ultimate, and Flocon gets caught out and will die. Holy smoke, the aggressivity coming out of Oakland right now. Terrifying. All right, Sama here. Going to find the Renekton. Wezek. Not able to do much, but honestly, the amount of damage that Kasama is putting down is massive. And he, Wesik does have anti heal for that Kasama, so it's not too, too bad. Here, Sama just wants to get some good damage onto that uh, turret, but I don't think he really can because Wesik just has enough damage that it doesn't really matter to him. As here, Miracle finds the jungler and will actually end up killing him. That's, that's um, although granted, he did have to. Uh, oh, Galio Ultimate was channeled but wasn't able to be pulled off. It was interrupted by a, what I believe is a Nico uh, route. As here, Sama does end up getting the 1v1 kill against Wezek and will end up getting that turret most likely. Maddie here gonna poke the mid turret, tier 2, and is going to make it fall down. The Saints once again have the advantage in terms of turrets, but. Turrets don't matter right now. Look at the gold. Oakland is ahead. The Saints were always ahead before, but now they aren't. So it's important to keep that in mind. The Saints are not ahead in gold. And gold is the only metric that really matters. So, keep an eye out on that. Flocon here trying to get that tier 2 turret, but he can't really do much. Bullyu is too ahead. So he's going to need to call his friends in just so that he can do that. Maddie can, Maddie can go over that wall? Wow. I did not think that uh, Sejuani could go over that wall. That is a big wall. Holy smokes. Okay. Uh, well, I guess you learn something new every day. One way or the other. Uh, here, when we're looking at it, 
But Saints have very good vision control. Look at the vision in the mid lane. It's just controlling everything. So the Saints know in and out what Oakland is doing. But, wait, are the Saints back? No, the Saints just equaled out all the gold. Okay, you know what? This isn't too bad. The Saints are technically ahead by like 100 gold. It ain't much, but it's something. Um, but one way or the other, it's important to keep in mind that the Saints need to capitalize on their signature advantage here. They have the turret advantage, but they don't have the gold and uh, the kill advantage. Which means that although they have a lot of pressure, um, their levels don't go up with turrets. Keep your gold. Pulling you here though, getting caught out by both the Sichuan and the Nico alt. Shaggy tries to protect his ADC, but he just can't wait. Dealing so much damage with those artillery shots from his ultimate. Actually, that's the first one that actually wants to Never mind. Really gonna get caught out here. Was that gonna do quick work of that ADC as per usual? Uh, but he's going to take a lot of damage. Holy smokes, Glowcon just absolutely shreds him. Um, and here, Ben Snap is kind of just not being the only one alive. His uh, galley is gonna come and back him up, but there ain't much to do from there. Uh, Maddie and Flocon are pretty healthy. Sama at full health and Miracle at like two thirds. And they will be in starting the Baron off of that. I mean, to be honest, you just killed three of their players you might as well. The question is, do you have the damage for it? I mean, to be honest, Flocon's probably their main source of damage right now. And there isn't much he can do. He doesn't have that much damage, so they can't really shred that Baron. They don't have a Kai'Sa. They don't have an attack speed Kogma. So, I don't really think that he can do much. And wait, what? Shadow Flame on Kog. Oh my god. No, 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 no. I'm not seeing this. This is a bad dream. This is a bad dream. I am not seeing this, I swear. Like, what are you doing? Why are you building AP Kogma? <laughs> this hurts my brain. Why can't you just be normal? Well, I mean, uh, as long as they win, I guess. I don't know. Man, he's going to get flamed so hard if the Saints lose this. <laughs> I mean, hey, you know what? If it works, it works. He is ahead on CS. I I'll give him that. He has the best CS in the game. At least there's that. Anyways, Matty here is... Uh... Oh, hold on. Ah, uh, yes, Riot, we love you. Please fix your game. At least the Observer Client. I, I don't really care too much about the game itself. But like, fix the Observer Client. Stop it from causing. Thank you. All right. Back to the game. Uh, Dragon has spawned. The Saints want to contest this one. So they are putting a lot of vision down. A vision which Oakland is more than happy to get rid of. So here, it's a battle of the vision. But which one are they going to fight over? Maddie here finds a little bit of a trade. Not going to go in, though. Big. Oh, no. Sama here finds two. Miracle gonna land a big ultimate, but isn't he going to be able to follow up on it? I don't think so. Maddie with the kill on the Galio. We're gonna find one on the board. Somehow that's an AP Cosmo, by the way. Maddie going to find the double kill. So is Link. Link finally has four kills. Yo, guys, that was the 0 3 ADC. Holy smokes. All right, that's a Baron for the Saints. Sama's probably going to be pushing in that mid lane. Going to be able to get some good damage down onto that mid turret. Uh, possibly just an inhibitor too. Because, let's be honest, you don't really need uh, Sama there. He's just not going to deal much damage to that Baron. What you really want is Lake with his uh, mage damage to the, the Baron. Yeah, I still don't know how that would act like. Who builds Corkius uh, uh, as a mage? Like... What, what are the benefits? Is that like the meta build? Yo, I need to check that. Is Corky's build... Hold on, I'm going to pull up OP.GG and check this. Because, like, there is no way that the meta build right now for Corky... Hold on. Uh, 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 no, I don't want to stay in. Stop! Let me just... Okay, OP.GG. Okay, come on. Load, 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 load. Fast internet, please. OP.GG. Okay, I want... Oh, that's... I don't want... Uh, uh, All right. What is the meta Kogma build right now? U.G.G. It's not OP.G. Wait, that is his meta build. It's AP Kogma. No way. No way AP Kogma is the meta build right now. Okay, never mind. I was wrong. You know what, Link? Do whatever you want. 
I mean, it seems to be working out. Like, getting a kill already. Oh, my brain hurts. Since when is Kog'Maw and APADC? <laughs> okay, anyways. Oh my god, Flocon, your HP. Where the hell did it go? I mean, I guess stuff happens, but still. Sama here tanking hooks, tanking CC, doing a great job at his job. Wezek here on the flank. Might actually be able to find the ADC. Let's see. Dominus is popped. Glocon gets him the airborne treatment. Gonna keep him. Ooh, that's a nice ultimate by Glocon there, but it's not gonna keep him alive. Wezek finds him. As here. The, oh, wait, no, it wasn't Wezek. It was Quirky. Hogman, though, is gonna find the Renekton. The Galliolt is channeled, but not going to do much here as Lig gets another kill. Bully, you going to get the kill onto uh, Lig because, well, I mean, he's squishy. He's very, very squishy. Here, though, the Saints with three alive are probably going to be able to finish up the game, possibly. Nico lands the loot. That's a, that's one turret down at least. Can they? Do they have the damage for it? That that Corky is very fed. Oh, Corky stunned. Corky not played. Okay, Corky dead. We're good. Maddie here going to probably finish off uh, the game with Sama and Miracle because they can. <laughs> Throwing the clone into the fountain. A beautiful performance by the Saints. Or is what I would like to say. Wait, hold on. Yo, uh, Maddie, hit the Nexus. Guys, guys, hit the Nexus. Hit the Nexus. Guys, the Nexus, please. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh wait, hold on, hold on. Lig is TPing. Lig is TPing. No! <laughs> what am I watching? Oh wait, no. The minions. Minions, baby. Okay. I mean, it took we it took a little bit, but they got there uh, over time. I mean, I'd like to say um, that the Saints did well that game, but. All in all, like, it was a really messy game. Like, that Kogma being AP just completely threw me up. I didn't even know his meta build was AP, which to me is just beyond reason because Kogma, I mean, space glider. That's, that's his whole thing. That's, that's his MO. But no, apparently now he's played AP. So uh, that happened, I guess. I, I don't know how to explain that one. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I don't know what the hell happened in that ball lane. Uh, Lake was like 0-2 for like half the game and just farming minions and towers. So that happened. Sama, though, great performance. Terrific performance. Uh, on that Cassante, he was able to get some good picks, uh, get some good damage down. Just really, really well done. Uh, all things considered. Uh, good performance by him. Flocon got caught out a lot of the times, but not on him. That, it was, I mean, okay, a few times. Uh, but a lot of the time it was just, he was attracting all the pressure uh, from that jungler, from that mid laner, from that support. And he was just getting permagate, but he did really well. I mean, he kept himself alive here and there. Um, and he was able to, like, kind of stay relevant in the game. It's Yone if he's always going to be relevant because he's got, like, three airborns in his game. Feels like. Um, but all in all, just well done. Uh, Maddie on that Sejuani was just doing a really, really good job. Uh, kept his lanes alive as much as possible. Get a Good job tanking, initiating. So did Nico, by the way. Uh, Miracle on that Nico was terrific. He found the engages. He found the good damage. Um, but it was so messy. It like compared to what the Saints normally play, this was just a really messy. Game. Not to say it was a bad game. I mean, they won, but it was very, very messy. And that's uh, that's maybe a little something that the Saints can improve on. But nonetheless. Uh, they did win 2-0 victory for the Saints, and uh, they will be moving on to the next game. So, I think that wraps up the stream for today. I'd like to thank our sponsors, thank their SRC, uh, the alumni, uh, Tim Morton's Subway, my drink today at Subway, so thanks to you guys. Um, all the guys in the back, uh, I know we got Dan that pretty much organized everything for us, my switcher who is right here. Uh, Alienware, of course, uh, is our standard sponsor uh, for the lab. It's technically, if I'm looking at, it's over there. Well, yeah, over there because I'm pointing over there on this. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, they're a huge sponsor. Thank you all for our OPCs. And uh, all in all, I think that pretty much wraps it up for today. Once again, I was 
post slash commentary block beat and i will see you guys on the next game of legends run back on